ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NJPW Poodle Wrestle Review. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the sick princess herself. It's Melba. <laughs> I know how you're doing, but how, how, are you feeling better these days? Uh, no? Maybe? Sort of. I'm feeling better than I did the last time we recorded, which is good. I've stopped sneezing, which is good. Uh, the homicidal rage to murder my cat right now, uh, who keeps waking me up all hours in the morning while I'm trying to heal, probably not helping me so much. However, the dog is still freaking adorable. How are you doing, Cookie! my friend? I'm doing pretty good. I had a good workout uh, as, as of when this comes out two days ago. But as for us, yesterday, I had a good workout. My back's still sore. Everything's still sore. But the good kind of sore, if you know what I mean. Lucky Mama Jamma. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Melville, you've, been, you've been a little down for the can. I haven't been able to build those shoulder boulders lately, eh? Uh, I'm losing gains every minute. I sit here with the sniffles. Telling you, big guy, this is why people don't like you. Yeah, yeah, uh, that that could be it, I guess. <laughs> Heal me. Yeah, but we're not here to talk about us being sick in our in our workouts and all that. We're here to talk about some professional wrestling. So we are going to talk about NJPW Royal Quest Three. But before we get to that. I want we want to thank each and every one of you guys. We appreciate all the great support you guys have given us, all the likes to the video, subscribe to the channel, comments down below. Uh, we appreciate all of it. And don't forget, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. I don't want any. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Oh, and don't forget hit the hit the share button. Send it out to your friends, your family, your enemies, whoever. <laughs> Especially random, this version. Ra random people you don't know. I, I I'm good with that. Just send it to whoever you want. Because just we'd appreciate it if you could just share us out. We really would appreciate all we appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. <laughs> but like I said, we're here to talk Royal Quest three. Third year in a row they've been going. They, or is this three year in a row? Yeah. Third year in a row. Or no. Was it 2019? Then it didn't come back to 2022. I, I, I don't remember. That's a math question that we already know Melball is not qualified for. Well, come on. You should know these things. This is not math. This is in general information. It's, there's numbers. Yeah, but you're not stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2019 was the first one. Then there was obviously the pandemic breaks in the next two years. Mm -hmm. And then they brought it back here. Uh, they brought it back last year. And then we, re we returned this year for Royal Quest Tennis, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, at the Copper Box Arena. Third year in a row at the Copper Box. So for a third year of the show at the Copper Box Arena. Mm -hmm. It kicks off. Uh, we get the vocal stylings of Chris Charlton and a man who couldn't hear half the time, Gideon Gray. So I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. I really don't know. I mean, for me, I actually had the opposite problem. I had a lot more problems understanding Chris Charlton. I think because of the audio quality on his end um, was a little raspier. Oh, I, I had the, I could bear, I could just hear Gideon, but Car Charlton came through fine for me. Interesting, because we were watching from pretty much the same source. Yeah, like, that's I, very interesting because I heard Gideon clearly the whole time. And I was wishing I didn't. Holy hecking crap! Especially when United Empire came out, he was just screaming. Oh, My oh, goodness! Did, did, and did you notice at the end when he was doing a sign off, get, Jeff Cobb goes, "Oh!" He literally put his his finger in his ear and backed away while Gideon's screaming in the ring, or screaming yeah. the sign off. It was insane. He, was, he I, was excited. <clears throat> I guess I gave away the finish of that one, but. Yeah, so we got Ginning Gray and uh, Chris Charlton on the call tonight. Uh, kick it off with a Robbie X versus the, sorry, the King of the Cruiserweights, Robbie X versus the Bone Soldier, Taiji Ishimori. Um, Robbie did face Gabe Kidd last year at Royal Quest Two, so you might you might recognize him from there. Uh, I love Ishimori's mask; it 
just the he's last guy. He's been on Osprey recently too, hasn't he, Robbie X? Yeah, but I'm just saying on it, the last time he was in New Japan itself, it was he was on the Royal Quest Two show. Oh, okay. So I'm just saying, it just if any any history of anybody that's watched the history of Royal Quest Two, that's where you remember him from. Um, but yeah, 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 he has faced Osprey and a couple others in the last little bit, like bigger names. I think he's faced Takagi in the last while too. So yeah, mm-hmm. faced some big names. I uh, love that mask. Taiji Shimori, the flashing eyes, so so good. Mm-hmm. Love that mask. Um, uh, the only referee other than the main event that I got the name of was Taito Nakamura. I didn't oh, recognize Oh, yes, the really expressive short one. Yeah, is he from New Japan Strong? Is the guy from he Strong? Is. That's he what is. I thought. This is what I thought. As soon as I saw him, I was excited because he's like the the um, that black ref on, on WWE who's so expressive and excitable. So he's like the equivalent. Yeah. So great opening sequence, lots of reversals, dodge from both. Ishimori blocks the handspring cutter, and uh, and then uh, Robbie X blocks the bloody cross. Ishimori kicking him in the gut to shake off uh, off the hand when he offered the handshake, uh, but X sends him to the floor. Again, I'm just gonna say X is easier. Uh, X sends him to the floor with a with any like he he's under the apron, then he did like. The flip into the heel kick on the apron. Uh, then he hits an, as I like to call it, the aggressive plancha. Uh, Robbie with the with a big, it gets uh, Ishimori back in, gets that big Eddie Guerrero sent on, and uh, after bringing Ishimori back in, uh, Ishimori starts the attack to the shoulder of, of Robbie X. Uh, he then removes the corner pad, runs Robbie into his shoulder first. Robbie fights back, taking down Ishimori, gets a beauty cartwheel into a seated drop kick. Uh, he misses a 450 splash. Ishimori gets him hung up in the ropes and hits a nasty German. Gotta love it. Shout out to Nasty Nate Nixon. Nasty uh, flex. Nasty flex, baby. Um, Ishimori gets him up, hits the shoulder. Like, the old school rock, when the rock was Rocky Maivia, off the shoulder into the shoulder breaker. That old mm-hmm. school. I was like, yes. But uh, as it goes for La Mystica, uh, Robbie X reverses into a roll up, gets a tornado kick in the corner, and then a f- does it's like flipping senton off the top. Um, Ishimori drop kicks the as Robbie X is going for the handspring cutter. Ishimori hits him with the drop kick, gets two. I uh, catches him on his shoulders off another handspring cutter attempt, hits the ELP UFO, and then follows it up. Bloody cross to win the match in seven minutes and 48 seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as we've mentioned in a few of our stardom and NJPW um, videos beforehand, um, the, the NJPW has been really, really good at creating these really banger opening matches and setting up the rest of the show. And this was no different. Um, I, I was a little nervous because with Ishimori, we don't really kind of know what his character is going to be like coming back off of this injury. Is he going to be the same? Is he kind of evolving? Kind of seems like there's a bit of an evolution there for me. I'm not going to lie. He kind of, he's kind of given me like wrong faction vibes right now. Like I feel like he's a heel, like undeniably he's a heel, but I don't feel that he fits with this current era of bullet club, much like, Chase Owens, much like Kenta. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if maybe the three of them kind of band together, kind of do their own kind of thing there. Um, with these two, it was a very interesting kind of cruiserweight match um, because Robbie acts obviously very much more of an aerialist than Ishimori, and Ishimori very much more of, um, I don't want to say a ground pounder, but like he's definitely more of a traditional power wrestler, traditional wrestling. And he didn't do, he does have his aerials, but they're usually something that he kind of pops off later in the match as a signature or something and not part of his regular um, repertoire. So it was interesting to see the dynamic between the two of them um, mixing the two styles. Um, Ishimori, I mean, I didn't expect him to not be this, but like he's come back shredded. And, like, he's also looks like he's actually lost a little bit of his bulk. I think he used to be a lot bulkier, a lot more no necky, But yeah. um, he's still very, very shredded. He's, like, calisthenics shredded right now. Like, he, he, like I said, he has lost a little bit of the size, but he's gotten that back in definition, which is 
looking amazing, but like, also like helping he, with like, his wrestling. I was gonna say, what? like he went from weightlifting to like CrossFit almost in the weight. Like, pretty like much. But he, he's, he, he's, slint, he's leaned out a bit, but he still let, got that shredded look from like a CrossFit yeah. he give you. Yeah. If you follow him on social media, you'll see that um, he doesn't do. Um, he does do weight training, but he doesn't do it nearly as much as he does like cardiovascular training mm. or calisthenics training, stuff like that. He does a lot of body work kind of exercises. So this is something similar that I do as well. So relatable seeing that kind of level of definition. Um, the bloody X that Robbie um, did where he kind of falls back, like falls backwards into the the, his back i guess and then does the the kip up into mm. the uh that was so cool i love that i wish i could do that but like you know falling it's kind of a problem for me um and the last thing i wanted to say the cutoff that ishimori did when uh, robbie went for that handspring off of the ropes just rude so rude well i think we really saw it marifuji did it there a month ago we were watching him and Osprey mm -hmm. and it just like and I, I've been noticing that move when people are blocking handspring cutters now it seems to be the more the new way of like that's how you block it is and now. smart yeah. super smart um but yeah the uh, again the the UFO of ELP it was just kind of like a ah you miss him it's like I don't hate you I I it again he what was he is wasn't he part of kicking ELP out though. Yeah. It's like, I kicked you up, but I miss you. Yeah, but wasn't um, Yujiro kicked out by G.O.D. also technically when they threw out Omega and the Bucks and Cody? Yujiro got tied up in the, the jumping there, too, and is still a part of House of Torture. So, you know, tomato, tomato. Hey, hey, you're saying Ishimori's healness doesn't really work with war dogs. Maybe he needs to get torturous. You never know. <laughs> Andre, I didn't <laughs> want to be sicker. Rude. He could be the torture soldier, you know? <laughs> no, let's move on. Jenny we first Murphy. Move on. It's El Desperado versus. NXT former NXT superstar Trent Seven, uh, Rev, Rev Pro Wrestling star Trent Seven. Um, we, Seven gets a chair before the match, brings it in. Despy gets his own chair. They have a chair duel. Despy wins the chair duel. Uh, they fight on the floor. Desperado tries to suicide dive, but Seven cracks him in the head with the chair. He's going for the suicide dive. Looks great. Um, and beats on them, short arm chops, like where the short arm, like you say, it's short arm Larry, but short arm chops instead by uh, seven. He gets a two count. Desperado rolls back out, seven beating him up on the floor. Uh, trying seven just tearing at the mask a bunch in this match, uh, really trying to mess with the, the eyesight and the, the try and take away the vision. If you mess with the mask, you won't be able to see properly, right. Um, I mean, maybe sort of with Desperado, he kind of just looks badass with it torn up. Not gonna lie, it's true, it's true. Or when he has like ha like a half mask on his head, yeah. Uh, from the death match, that was great. Uh, mm. Don't want to see a death match again, but it, the mask was mm. great. Um, <laughs> yeah, that fake out clothesline into the DDT by Seven, taking a page out of Takagi's book. I loved it. Mm -hmm. seeing, I love that move. Uh, tears at the eye of the mask again. Seven chopping, but Despy is unaffected because he's pissed off at this point. And gets his own chops, hits the backdrop for two, then goes, then gets, applies numero dose, but Seven gets to the ropes pretty darn quickly, goes to the floor. Desperado finally gets a suicide dive, then gets a brain buster back in the ring for two. Seven reverses Pinche Loco into a sick looking pile driver for two. That pile driver was. Awesome. I thought it was over when he cracked it with that pile driver. Same, same. As soon as I saw that, I was like, gosh dang it. Why can't Desperado seem to pick up any wins on his own lately? Yeah. So Trent Seven goes to the top and he does legitimately what I look like to me with a fucking sky twister. Like, like, yeah, I thought the yeah. same thing. I was like, what the frick? Everyone's copping an Osprey now. And this guy's like way big, way thicker than Osprey and he's doing a sky twister. Um, and then, uh, 
Desperado tries to pinch a loco, but gets sent into the ref. Seven hits a pump handle, Emerald Flosion, but he only gets two, and he's pissed at the ref that it wasn't three. Uh, Desperado dodges a strike, catches seven with the best that I can say is a Kishikase. I can't remember what his name for it is. And steals the win in eight minutes and eight seconds. I thought the same thing. I was like, I thought we were watching in JPW. Here's Cash Masaki just rolling up some chunky Witcher looking dude. Um, yeah, Desperado wins it in eight minutes and eight seconds. Yeah. Very happy about this. Very happy. Well deserved. Desperado has been putting in the work this mm-hmm. year. I mean, he's been putting in the work for a few years now. Oh, yeah. And especially with strong style this year with Suzuki and Narita, I've kind of felt that Desperado has kind of been pushed to the side a little bit in lieu of, you know, Suzuki is the king of pro wrestling. So he needs to be front and center, but also Narita being one of the three returning musketeers and and he's having one hell of a year. I mean, that G1 run was incredible, but Desperado, I mean, he got to team that despite us not really liking it, he got to team with Jun Kasai, who's like one of his like mentors and, and people he adores. He's gotten to, he, we saw him fight um, Moxley. Like he's been having a decent year, and but he hasn't been picking up those really good solid wins. I think this was a nice win for him. Um, I would have liked to see it happen in America as well. But you know, yeah. the Americans they they need to win more than than these guys. The the Brits they just they like to have great wrestling, I guess. Um, yeah. This was a really really fun match. I I thought I'd recognize Trent. It took like most of the match for me to like figure out where I had recognized him from, and then I was like, oh right, he was a part of that tag team where like the shorter stouter one was the hot one, and then he was the loud one with the mustache. Yeah, he was part of a trio originally with Pete Dunn and Trent Seven as British oh, Strong. They Dunn were right they were British Strong style, and then Dunn separated from them in WWE, went going heel, and him and Seven were a tag team. Yeah, yeah. The, the short hot one, as you say. Yes, the short hot one. That was Tyler, right? Tyler Bates. Tyler Bates. Yeah, Tyler yeah. Bates. Yeah. Yeah. But again, uh this dude's ab- I think this guy's absolutely phenomenal. I I would I would really like to see him get brought over to New Japan proper. Like, I think he would do well coming in there. He doesn't have to be a top – top. he's not going to be a top guy. But coming in to work, as, like, maybe a guy who can be – but he's a, he's a lower card guy that – yeah, a guy that can be brought in to take losses in a G1. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the cup or the G1 would be a great opportunity for him. I think he'd be absolutely phenomenal. And just even as a regular, like – mid to lower card guy working with a, like working with your young lions giving them a different a, a different style to work with to mm-hmm. kind of help evolve them i think he would be absolutely perfection bring in uh, for a few tours here and there 100 percent, 100 percent. one thing i also wanted to add to this was that i noticed the crowd in this one um i noticed it in the first one but i didn't write it down until the the second match here um that british crowd is just so passionate about their wrestling i love how loud and appreciative they are but they're also like their perfect combination of like a north american and japanese audience where they will be so loud at all the right moments that they need to be but then they will be silent to watch the match until the stuff happens that dictates for them to kind of respond unlike like some i find that in the north american crowds we kind of like we cheer and then we chat we're just sitting there like la 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 to each other. So there's that constant perpetual noise happening in the stadium. Whereas like at the like watching this and it was like watching an NJPW or even a stardom show where the crowd was just so much a part of the show for me. If I didn't hear them, I feel I might not have enjoyed it as much. Well, I think a big part of British crowds is also the fact that they have the rolling chants as they go because they they'll do they'll do a big group big the whole place will start chanting something because I know they had the ba- like in WWE they had the Bailey chants that they would do but then you hear them quiet down and they don't you don't hear a lot of sound of them because they're all watching waiting when we're we gonna do the next it's, it's like when are we gonna do the next big 
group chant like like song chant the song the songs that they do because that's more of what i think of british credit it's songs and they sit there kind of more respectful uh, other than the like even japanese crowd when they hit something big hits they go ah and that's the uk crowd is very similar except they have the songs they sing about the wrestlers and thing and they did that yeah. do that throughout the night but i really have it in, uh, in the post match of the main event i have some written down that they changed it. <laughs> they were perfection Oh, yeah. They were great throughout this show. And like I said, they added so much to the show. Uh, it yeah. just, if they weren't there, I, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much. Yeah. So we move on. It's Neo Suji versus, as I like to call him since I saw his picture, generic man number two, Luke <laughs> Jacob. Like, dude, that face, <laughs> the, face, the haircut, I'm sorry. You, The guy was really great in this match. Really? But- like I, I thought he was good. Like him and Suji had a great had a great match here. I just thought he just like his face, just his look is super generic number man number two. In my that's how I felt about the guy. I mean, if I can be honest, he did have a very strikingly similar look to Robbie X from the first one. The only yeah. difference is is that this guy clearly stole his grandpa's pants. And had them hiked up to his freaking belly button. But, like, the problem that I had with that is that he was clearly, he was double double wrapping it, right? So he had something underneath, and then he had something, he had the, the gear over top. The problem is that the gear underneath was tighter than the gear on top. So you could see where it was actually holding on to his waist, about, like, that much farther down on his waistband. And then... There was this just inner tube thing on on top. Um, take us into the match because I think I felt a little differently about this one than you did. I'll say Luke has the slaps. I'll tell you that. I, I'll I'll give him that. When he slaps Susie early, I was like, holy shit! It, it was a good slap. Uh, There's a really good, nice forearm exchange. Luke shops Susie with a shoulder block. Suji stops him in the corner, grabs his head with the legs, and slams the face and head into the mat. I love that move. Uh, Beauty of a tilt the world backbreaker by Suji. Hard for him to the jaw, but Luke comes right back with a suplex. Uh, slam and sent on, and then followed by a backdrop driver by Jacobs for two. Suji gets the lethal injection face slam stomp thing that he does. Um, I just don't know what to call it, but I, I love it. I don't have his card in the game yet, so I don't know what to call it. I mean, we'll just start tweeting him random names and see if one of them fits. There we go. The in- lethal stomp. I don't know. What the, because it, no, I don't want to trade off, uh, off Jay Lethal. But yeah. Uh, Jacobs with the headbutts. The headbutts were like, fuck. Uh, mm. <laughs> I was like, I'm not a big headbutt fan. We're going to get more later on. But uh, but Suji attacks. But Jacobs comes back with a run. Like, there's a running headbutt to the chest and gets a two count. Uh, Jacobs gets him up top. Hits a rising headbutt as he's climbing. Uh, and then a superplex followed by a running lariat for two. Suji slips out of the power bomb, hits at his own headbutt. Falcon arrow driver hits the stomp, hits the gene blast, and Suji gets the win in nine minutes and one seconds. Suji then picks up Jacobs, tosses him to the floor so he can have the ring to himself. Then as he's walking around the ring, he kicks the random dude at ringside. The uh, I'll give it the striking of this man like. Luke was fairly generic, but the striking exchanges in this match, I thought were great. When these two are smacking and beating on each other, mm-hmm. that was when this match really shined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and for me, that was unfortunately the only parts that did. Um, with the, Overall, I felt that this match was actually very solid, very good, but very basic. Um, in, in regards to what we know that Yoda Suji can do, it felt, I don't want to say underwhelming, but it was certainly like we could have seen more. Um, in regards to Luke Jacobs, here's the thing. I see a lot of potential in him. And I think they said on commentary, he's only like, what, 23 years old? He's very, very young. Yeah. Um, what I got out of his movements, maybe I'm. Maybe this is me just looking too much into it. And maybe let me know if you see the comparison. But he was giving me Hickey Man vibes. And like not Hickey Man now, Hickey Man oh, before the, ba- the balance. The balance. He, he was very um, not a hundred percent steady on his feet. Um, there were times where he was taking those long strides, which looked really, really good. 
um, but he was not so balanced on them like Hikaleo was when he first started with a strong brand. But then mm. also, it was almost like he couldn't figure out his footing at some points because he would take those really long strides, hit the ropes, and then turn around like Chris Parrish, our friend Chris Parrish, and do these tiny little diddly 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 steps. And, I'm, and I was like, dude, what are you doing? Are you happy feet? Are we tap dancing? What's happening right now? Um, oh, I'm, but, I'm, 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 I'm cutting that part out. <laughs> it, it was very, it was an interesting similarity and like con contrasting between, you know, the styles. But overall, again, I, I think it was a decent match. It just wasn't what I expected mm -hmm. out of, of Suji. Um, but I don't, I didn't have any expectations with Jacobs because I didn't really, this was my first time kind of seeing him. I'm not really too, yeah, me too, privy into the, the Rev Pro guys. Um, but yeah, he, I have to agree, he did kind of look a little generic, but I feel like that is kind of the look that the UK does is the, the trunks, the minimal, um, shoes, the shorter hair. I don't well, know where yeah. the owls come from. Maybe that's an, an Antonio Inoki thing. I don't know. I I like Trent Seven did it. Uh, Tyler Bate did it. Pete Dunn did it. It, it. It's a common spot more in the British scene. You see the guys come yeah. up with the towel. Like Shibata has done it for a long. Yeah, I think it all comes from Inoki originally. He was the one. Okay. Like it, it comes from a general sports thing. Like seeing like. I can impressed. imagine it would be really good if your pits get sweaty or something, just wipe real quick. Or... Yeah, and I guess more from a, a fighting, the fighting world more or less, I think, where the carrying mm -hmm. the towel kind of mm -hmm. comes in. Because I, all I think is Suzuki with it over his head. Yeah. So we move on. Oh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Title Match. It's the Bullet Club War Dogs, Clark Connors, and Drilla Maloney taking on the uh, team from Rev Pro. Cameron Kai and Leon Slater. Cameron Kai if in the picture is the one on the left. Cam uh, or sorry, Leon Slater is the one on the left. Cameron Kai is on the right in in the in the picture of those two. Um, Cameron Kai is, as commentary said, only seventeen years old. There as of this match. Yeah, they said I missed old. that. What he said, he's seventeen years old. The guy with the braids. Uh, Cameron, right? Yeah, the the one on the right there. Yeah, he, he, the one with the braids. Jesus, that means Leon's even younger, isn't he? I don't think so. I thought Leon was the one that was younger. I couldn't really tell. There was too much going on at this point. I'm also sick. You are sick in the head for sure. Well, I'm sick in the head every other day. I'm just sick in general right now. Yeah, but I could have thought maybe he said it about uh, Leon Slater. I don't know, but yeah, I I'm really not sure. But yeah, I, I heard somebody say he, Kai's 17, and I was like, huh, interesting. At one point in the match. Um, I can't find anything because he doesn't have a real page. Ward has attack for the bell, as usual. They take the fight to the floor. Back in the ring, beauty front flip into a head kick by Kai. Uh, as I'm calling them, Sla Kai. Slater and Kai. It's a terrible name, I know. Uh, hit the dual planches to the floor after sending Ward out to the floor. Uh, Connors comes in after Drilla's working in the ring with Kai and just pounces the shit out of Cameron Kai. Like, sends him halfway across the ring. Like, Lance Archer style right there. Um, yeah. Uh, Maloney vicious with the strikes. Uh, double arm bar by Maloney. But Kai slips out into an O'Connor roll for two. Then as he goes for the tag, Connors ends up pulling Slater off the apron. Maloney going back to the attack again. Wardogs taking in and out, beating up on Kai. Kai reverses a suplex by Connors into a death of a valley driver. Slater and Maloney just beating the crap out of each other with the strikes. Uh, Slater gets the gets the attack, taking out both Connors and Maloney off the double a team. Um, triple locomotion, Northern Lights suplex by Kai, and a double high cross by Leon Slater, followed by the handspring back elbow, and Kai gets two. Uh, Drilla fights back, hits a super kick to Slater, and a pop up into a Connor Spear. Uh, they hit the high low to Kai, but he reverses the full clip, knocks Connors to the floor. Uh, Slater hits a topic on Hilo to Connors on the floor, and then Kai gets a slingshot cutter to Maloney. But Slater gets crotched up top when he goes up for a top rope move. Connors hits the no chaser to Kai in the ring. Drilla pulls Slater down. 
hits the drill to kill a, to Slater, and then they hit the full clip to Kai, and War Dogs retain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles in 12 minutes and two seconds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I figured out what was confusing me. Because on commentary, they kept saying Leon Slater is the youngest in charge. That's his like nickname. Yeah. So that's why I was like all confused about it because he's 19. Mm. Makes sense. So, yeah, that was why I was confused. But I didn't hear them say the 17. Yeah, I could. I I would be really surprised about that. We were talking about Azami, who's been wrestling since she was 11. Yeah. So, again, (laughs) and then like we talk about Rena, Rena and Hina, who are. 16 we're talking about tomaka naba who's 15 so again yeah J- japan it's not we so shouldn't weird. be surprised by this <laughs> osprey who's been wrestling since he was what 13 or 14 years old like well, let me me. Even look at the local soy boy soy boy who's just turned not who's just turning 20 this Poor year soy boy. he doesn't know that that's who he is <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. he's not soy boy anymore. But no, we'll, we'll talk about that. On, we'll talk about that this weekend. Later this weekend <laughs> for, a, for a recap of uh, Top Town for Wrestling. You didn't stop talking before I started coughing. My goodness. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, talk, talk, <laughs> talk, talk, talk. <laughs> this uh, this match was amazing. I didn't mm-hmm. expect any less out of Bullet Club. Um, I. It's weird because, like, I knew Clark Connors was a good wrestler. I never thought about him being a very efficient tag team wrestler, though. I I always felt that he would be someone who would be kind of like a lone wolf. He would be able to kind of be that powerhouse on his own. But I feel like that the partnership with um, Drilla Maloney has given him not just something to focus on, but like it, it's giving him a purpose and it's giving him this ability to involve himself as a wrestler and as a, in this company. Um, this was my first time seeing um, Cameron and Leon. Mm-hmm. Holy yeah. heckin' crap. Uh, put Drilla especially through the freaking ringer. I felt like Drilla was in this match a heck of a lot more than Clark Connors. Like, but I also feel like the crowd recognized because this is Drill Maloney's like stomping grounds. So I feel like they recognized him a lot more. So they appreciated him being in the ring a little bit more, um, mm. especially when he was like getting served by by Leon, um, especially. Um, I felt that the the kind of magic that Drilla had with Leon was just oof, that that high speed aerialness that just. It was almost like again watching Azumi and Starlight Kid, just the reversals and and the attempts and everything, and it was really, really, really fun to watch. Um, the story, which like in this one that they kind of created with the kind of dysfunctional ruffians of the Bullet Club taking on the Golden Boys of of Rev Pro here, I thought it was really, really well done. Um, it really speaks to these guys' ability to create a story almost seemingly out of nothing. Cause like I don't feel like there was a ton of build going into this these matches. Not at so all. to be able to create that thing for people to be excited about while it's happening is quite impressive. This was a fun match. Yeah, a lot of these matches did have the from here on do have background. Uh, of certain other things that led to these matches, but n- maybe not the match itself, other than maybe the the, the co-main events. Those are the only two, the semi and the main event. Those are the only two I feel like had a true, proper, had a build of anything. The rest all have stories that go into it. Like the next match, we have get the Gorillas of Destiny, El Phantasmo, Tamatanga, and Tangaloa taking on the Bullet Club OR Dogs, Alex Coughlin, David Finley, and Gabe Kidd. My question. So the junior t- champs have the the black, white, and gray camo shorts yeah. on. Kid yeah. and Coglin have the camo shorts on. Yeah. Why doesn't Finley? Why don't doesn't he match his team? Why does a manager in a store not look like every other employee? They do at my store. Well, we all just wear vests. Here. Um, any retail store that I've worked in, the manager looked like a manager. Us peasants look like peasants. Um, 
So, you know, maybe. But it also, I mean, Gato was there, so but, we yeah. also know that Gato is probably not doing what he needs to to get Finley's gear ready. Or maybe it was just not ready for the show. Maybe I just think he I just think you can keep the general style to him, but like flow in some of the black and black, white, and gray camo into his gear, just so yeah. it kind of flows when he's working with these. Like, because he like was it the last show, uh, destruction. He like he like again. It's or in the lead up to destruction, he kind of stood out with his team. I guess it's more he does stand out uh, compared to his out. team, though, and I think that is that is what they're going for but i just look at it and i go doesn't seem cohesive in my personal opinion i mean but the way they work together would suggest oh. otherwise holy oh. shit well to a point uh they all start brawling on the floor was god is coming out um chops and headbutts in the corner by kid uh but elp comes back with a draw kick then gets the rope walk head scissors love that uh was it slam hammer i think you called it the chop thing from loa Sword hammer. Sword hammer. Sorry, sorry. I thought you said slam hammer, but I was like, that thing's too sexual for what something she would make up. Sl uh, yeah, that would be pretty sexual. Yeah, but even sword hammer doesn't sound so great. Sounds better. The sword hammer by Loa to Coggin into the corner hits the lariat through the ropes and then gets, but he gets grabbed by like that when it's like that Miz style lariat where he hops up and like clotheslines into the ropes, but he gets ends up getting grabbed by uh, Finley and. Uh, uh, Kaga ends up lariating uh, Loa onto the apron. Um, yeah, and then uh, Kid attacks him with a chair on the floor. Kaga raking the eyes to stop the Tango Loa comeback. Uh, War Dogs triple team Loa. Uh, and Kid gets the backdrop driver. To, and ZLP tries to come in to save. War Dogs really beaten up on Tango Loa, tagging in and out. Uh, Loa fights them off in the corner, hits a back body drop, but Kid pulls uh, Tamatonga off the or Tamatonga off the apron when he goes in for the tag. War Dogs triple team, but uh, Tamatonga comes in for the save, faking out all three, uh, taking out all three, sorry, and ripping off the shirt. Coggan catches uh, the corner splash, but ELP hits a drop kick. Like, um, ELP hits a moonsault to the floor onto Kid and Coglin. Finley tries to roll up on Loa, but he kicks it too. And then he hits a blue thunder bomb, but ape shit or Loa hits a blue thunder bomb, but ape shit is stopped by uh, Gabe kid sudden death to kid by ELP and Tonga hits the guns or hit or sorry. ELP then hits another uh, sudden death to Coughlin and in comes Sam Tonga with the gun stun God triple team Finley Loa hits ape shit and pins Finley. For the win at 10 minutes and 41 seconds. That's a the one person on War Dogs I didn't expect to be taking a pin was David King Finley. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Insane. And especially considering how much Gabe Kidd was getting beat up on the, on the War Dog side. Like he was the one who was getting wrecked the most. Which I think the fans appreciated by the sounds of it. <laughs> um yeah fans were not happy to see gabe kid storming his way down to the the ring and you know it created quite a, a nice little controversy in the the crowd i think um coglin is just endlessly impressive i mean how strange is it to see him in Bo bullet club it, it, i don't want to say that it's not like he doesn't fit but he's certainly like the Mirai of the group. He is the quiet riot that they kind of like keep in the back until they need him. And then they're like, send in the big gun. And Unle unleash the monster. <laughs> Release the Kraken. Mm -hmm. And and that is Coglin. Um, yeah. They really isolated Loa in the beginning of this one. That was um, for me that I was kind of like at this point, like, Oh no, is he going to be the one to take the fall? It would kind of make sense to me. Um, Tama Tonga looking phenomenal. I like how um, G.O.D., now that Tonga Loa has gone back, like gone to the new kind of G.O.D. tactical look there and, and upgraded from bonus skin G.O.D. special skin number one. Um, I'm happy 
because he looks like he's a part of that group again. Um, I'd love to see ELP, even though his gear does sort of already look like it. I would like to see ELP kind of get that kind of style as well. And all and all he has to do is just get the shirt. The pants are already the the style of his gear of his gear currently. He just oh yeah, already to, works. He just needs to get a, 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 a I, and I don't think he should get a top that matches Jado, Tama, and Tangaloa. I think he needs to get it with the with the stripes down, like Hikuleo. Yeah, so it would make sense because he's teaming more with Hikaleo than... And, and he could take it off if he doesn't want to wear it during a match. It's fine. Just for a, a symmetry of look on your entrance and stuff, I think you should have the, a one that similarly uh, similar to Hikuleo's. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's yeah, because like, as much as I love the, the studded vest and like the the lights on his vest, it... It's Bullet Club ELP when I think of that. It's not G-O-D ELP, you know? Um, and I feel like it's it's probably time for that evolution. Um, we've gotten the mullet, and we've gotten the pink mullet now. So I think it's time we can start moving on to the clothes. I think you need to move on from that. I think um, you need to move on from the mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be popular right now, man. Um, yeah. The last thing I want to say is um, at the end of this match, it, it kind of felt like G.O.D. was not necessarily like they just didn't have their on switch flipped on once this match started. And there was some point right at the end there where it just switched and they just went out and they wrecked Bullet Club's day. And it was phenomenal. Um, it's really nice to see that when the teams actually like cohesively Kind of like one of them says, okay, we need to get our shit together. And it just kind of happens. Um, really, really nice to see Tonga getting the win on this one, too. Um, did you hear the adorable freaking no, way? No, no, it was Loa. Yeah, it's, Tonga, so that's what I meant. I know what you meant. Tonga. I, what, isn't Tonga what I said, or did I say Tama? You said Tonga. Yeah, Tonga Loa. Oh, I thought you said Tonga, Tonga as in Tama Tonga, not Tanga Loa. No, I, apo I apologize. Tonga Loa. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> Tonga got the, the pin, as I was saying. And did you hear the adorable way that Chris Charlton <laughs> said ape shit? I missed oh that. Oh, my God. He just, he gets him up and he goes, an ape shit. Like, he just... <laughs> I was like, what in the world was that? That was like, you're preparing for like an earth shattering fart and you just get a toot. It was just, it was adorable. Um, but yeah, this one was fun. I really had a lot of fun with this one. Me too. Me too. We move on. Tag team match. Ren Narita and Shota Umino facing the United Empire's Francesco here and the Great Okan. Gideon just going off on commentary about his team. Like, just too much, dude. Like, fucking shut up. He was screaming so loudly that it was clipping. Like, you know when someone screams into the microphone and they get that clipping kind of noise? Mm -hmm. That's what was happening the whole time he was screaming. Like, it was just like, he would cut out and you'd just hear this click, 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 click. He was, he was mental. But hey, I mean, what a hype man, you know? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you want someone like that in your ear and in your corner when you're going out there for a main event match, let alone match six of ten. <laughs> um, yeah, take us into it, man. So Akira, to me, looked like he aged like a good couple of years here with the hair and the beard. Like, grew the beard out, oh, has the longer hair. Haircut. Amore. Like, oh, no, 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 no. I like it. I like it, man. It makes no, him, no, no, doesn't no, make no, him no, look no, like no. a child anymore. God. But he is a child. <laughs> He's 23. That's just a, a child. Ch it's not a child. A child is under 18. Come on, you know. Omen fan. Okay, not a child. He's a, an adult. But yeah, I still call him a child. He's 23. He's an adult to me. Yeah, so uh, strange bedfellows in this match with uh, Narita and Umino. Again, they just came off the best of seven series. And really, Khan and Akira, well, well, Sablemates, you don't really see these two team together much. So you've seen them in like odd multi man tags and stuff. But just a straight up two man team is not regular here. Not regular. And if I can be honest, not a great combination. No, because. 
like Akira was in greatly undersized compared to his opponents. Like you could very much see that. Uh, good technical wrestling early with with uh, um, Uma or with uh, I think it was yeah Narita and uh, Khan looked really good. Umino and Narita double teaming Khan. Narita gets the DDT suplex for two. Akira in attacks Narita and knocks Umino off the apron. Uh, Khan gets the Mongolian chops to Narita. Uh, kick and moonsault. Kick, kick, and then a moonsault out of the corner by Akira for two. Uh, Khan back in, gets the forearms to the back of the head, sits on Narita's head in the corner, then hits a gut wrench suplex for two. Khan trying to get Narita to kiss his boot, but Narita ain't going to bow down to that. And again, it's very appropriate because that was one of Khan's things when he was in over here in Rev Pro was making people kiss his boots. Um, Umino in like a house on fire, back elbow and suplex in the corner for two. Khan gets an arm drag and tags out. Akira gets tossed over the top, but comes in with a slingshot cutter. Uh, uh, United Empire double team, do, do a double team that ends with a high cross by Akira off the top for two. Victory roll stomp by Akira, but, um, but Umino comes back. Umino comes but Umanarita, as I wrote, Umanarita. I don't know. I still don't know what to call these guys. Umanarita, double team Akira. Hit the heart attack, but Khan stops the pin. Uh, super kick by Umino. Avo- uh, to or super kick by Umino, and he avoids the speed fire. Or sorry, super kick by Akira, but Umino avoids the speed fire. I write this so weird. Even though I'm the one writing. Um, but Umino hits the ign- hits the ignition, and even and. Charlton said he's got the key. Said the keys to ignition. He said it. He said the R. Kelly line. Um, hits the ignition for two. Uh, then the rolling back elbow. Umino hits a death rider. Pins Francesco here at ten minutes twenty five seconds to end this match. At the and then Khan and Narita end up fighting on the floor. And it looks like we know one of the tag teams going into the uh, World Tag League in November. It'll be Umino Rita. Let's call them two thirds. Umanarita. Two thirds. Two of the three musketeers. Two thirds. Um. Yeah. Um. I I kind of relate with what you said earlier, and I've said it in videos before that I don't like it, and that's when people aren't put in matches with people of appropriate size and or experience. Um. Akira was definitely thrown into this match, I feel, um, unfairly. I think that United Empire probably would have done better in this match if Akira was in the other match and TJP was in this one. Um, or, or, and then, I got that, yeah. TJP oh. is a more appropriate size. Or, uh, just subbing out Akira for Callum Newman, who, while still a junior, is a lot bigger than Akira. Yeah, yeah, just I, I I'm think like, he's yeah, a because like I don't feel like this was a very fair match for Akira. No, and to be honest, like kind of felt it from him through this match. I, I felt a little bit of attitude, um, which I love coming from Akira. I mean, that feisty Italian, you know, passion that they have. I like that, but it was not what I was used to to seeing from Akira, and it felt off for me as a result. Um, the beginning there though. Did not like um I mean it was funny, but like as a as a fan, I was immediately like, what are you doing? When Umino was sitting there imitating Great O'Conn sitting there, and then he turns around and bends over and starts spanking his butt, and I'm like, What are you doing, sir? Like <laughs> You are on Royal Quest. This is an international show. Please show. <laughs> Please don't show your ass like that. Um, it was a little weird to me. It, it kind of took away a bit of the seriousness right away for me. Um, which made me happy that Narito kind of stayed in there a little bit at first. Because it allowed me to forget mm-hmm. about the butt slapping. That shouldn't have happened. Um, yeah. Okan did really, really good in this match. It was interesting to see Narita and Shota teaming together. Do I want to continue seeing it? I don't really know. I think I like seeing them fight each other better than I like seeing them fight together. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but for the time being, like, I, they have their entire careers to fight against each other, so I can deal with it. But, like, in this match in particular, I kind of felt that it was one of those stacked decks. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Akira was put in there with the guaranteeness that he would be the smaller fall guy to the, the two larger guys on the other team, and that kind of annoys me. Um, like I said, I probably think I would have been happier if TJP was in this one and then Akira was in the other one. It just was, mm. I think it would have made more sense, but we got what we got, and it was still a good match. I always like seeing Akira. Yeah, because, like, especially with the six-man, I think Akira, while Oku is a heavyweight champion, I think he matches up to Oku better than he does with Narita or or, uh, or Umino. So I especially just think, in styling. And Oku, remember, is a former British cruiserweight champion. He's yeah. not a... He's not a larger no. heavyweight. He's a light heavy. He's a lighter yeah. heavyweight. So I think Akira would have matched up better there. 100%. Or, and not to mean take out Akira, but having Callum Newman in this spot would have made a lot more sense because he had been facing a lot of heavyweights the last couple months. I mean, I understand with Callum because he is new. You guys want to like kind of show him off a little bit. And I believe he didn't come from the Rev Pro kind of era. Um, that being said, though, Akira has been hmm. in the faction a little bit longer, and I don't think he's had the opportunity to perform no. in Rev Pro. So I think they made a good decision by, by bringing him as opposed to Callum. Hmm. But I don't feel that the match that he was put in was for his best interest, unfortunately. Yeah, and I think Akira would have benefited better. Yeah, you're right, in the sixth man. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. We move on. It's LIJ versus just five guys. It, it is uh, Bushi and Naito taking on Doki and Sonata. Bushi with the UK colored mat, like colored cover mat, Loved it. mask, and his regular mask, both UK themed. So start oh. with Naito. No, oh. and the shirt. Yeah, and he's and he's. I I, don't, I even wrote down. I want a Canadian LIJ shirt like Bushi's UK one. Hey, let's tweet him. I, I want one. I don't want you to have one. I want one. Rude. You can't have one. You already Rude. Have, you already have an LIJ shirt. I have several LIJ shirts. I'm saying you have several, so I get the Canadian one. <laughs> Rude. Uh, slow start with Naito avoiding lockups, but Sonata eventually attacks him. Naito gets Sonata to the floor, does his Naito pose, but Doki stomps him in the Naito pose. I was like, yes. Or no, Doki yeah. sent on him. Sorry. Uh, and just five guys double team him. Doki get and this is where Doki and Doki does get the stomp there. Uh, Bushi with the roll up uh, and Naito drop kick or the sunset flip into the Naito drop kick. Uh, Naito gets the camel clutch, but he's like pulling on the braids of Do like Doki's braids instead. Like real dick move there. Uh, Sonata is in and he gets Naito in the paradise lock. Uh, Naito gets the atomic drop, starts the attack on the neck with the elbows and the neck breaker. Forearm battle in the center, but Sonata reverses the tornado DDT, hits the magic screw. Uh, just five guys double team, and Doki gets the stomp off the top, um, but only gets two, then applies the Doki Choki. And yes, the crowd, yes. the best part, the crowd, Doki Choki. Doki, yes. Doki. That was so yes. good. Oh, I love the. I and it has it. been a hot minute since we've seen a Doki Choki. Yeah, like and per perfect pulling it out, man. The perfect crowd to do it in front of. And the most appreciative crowd for it. Let me tell you. Yeah, uh, but Naito does get to the ropes. Naito stops suplex to La Luna, dodges a daybreak, gets the atomic drop, the assister tittering a TDT from Bushi. And Bushi hits the suicide dive to uh, Sonata on the floor. Naito mm -hmm. hits Doki with the Destino. But but Chris Charleston didn't do it that way. He just said Destino. Yeah, he just said Destino. He didn't I hope, do it. I hope the new guy that's coming in is going to be able to do that. Destino. Long shoes to fill on that one. And he gets the win at 9 minutes and 29 seconds. Naito and Sonata do have a face-off after the match. But Bushi... Missed Sonata and Naito sends him to the floor. It was like, ooh, Bushi's Bushi's still pissed. Sonata. Oh. I mean, you know, clearly, you know, maybe some animosity still. You know, Sonata did kind of leave LIJ high and dry. 
Mind you, I mean, did, but did but did Sinata just leave Lij high and dry? And did Lij also leave Sinata high and dry? You know, when he was with Lij, um, Sinata just couldn't get that main event win. He couldn't get that high important win. He was always in the bracket. I mean, we know lots of people who are always in that number one contender spot, but not never seem to be able to get quite over that hump. Um, leaving LIJ, look what happens immediately. Boom, he wins the title. He's now the champion of the, the company. Hmm? It's been the most underwhelming run with the title that I've seen in a very long time, but he got it. And, like, let's go back to the crowd again for a second. Holy heckin' crap, were they excited to see Naito. Holy shit. They, they were, and he was milking it. He was loving it. Especially on that intro. Oh, he was loving that. Um, this was a great strong style match. Great NJPW match for the UK crowd. Um, the Paradise Lock on Naito was a nice touch. Um, as soon as they started, like, as soon as the Doki Choki got locked in, though, I was like, mm, LIJ is winning this one. Because mm. there was no way that they're going to let them, because LIJ was pretty dominant throughout the, 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 the beginning of that match. So I was like, oh, okay, we're going to let them win this one. This, this made me happy. Um, that Tope from Doki, or Do, uh, Doki from Bushi, <coughs> um, a little low, hit him a little low, um, Kind of wasn't honing at his face, honing um, more at his like other lower head. intestine and at his you know, other head. Yeah, <laughs> I, I no, not quite that low. He didn't go that low. Um, but if he like had any less speed, he probably would have. No, he managed to hit him in the lower gut. Um, but like, <laughs> it was it was kind of funny just because like he he hit him and then he pushed him a little bit. <laughs> it was like kind of getting. Shoved in the gut. It looked really funny when he went down. Anyway, um, yeah, I had a good time with this one. It was it was fun to see Bushi do the mist, and he hit it directly. That was right. It was square all, in the nose. It was all over Sonata's face. Yeah, perfect, perfect hit. Perfect yeah. hit. And like you know, not gonna lie, Tor is not bad with her mist, but her aim sometimes a little off. Take some lessons from Bushi. Yeah. That that aim was perfect. Perfection. We move on six person tag match. It's Eddie Kingston, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and or sorry, one third of the never open weight champion, uh, six man tag team champion is Tanahashi. The current ROH and New Japan Strong champion Eddie Kingston, and the Rev Pro Wrestling British Heavyweight Champion Michael Oku taking on United Empire's Hanare Jeff Cobb. And TJP, I'm sorry, as soon as I saw this announced and they're all champions, I was like, Empire's losing this. I'm like, that's, that's all I could think going into this match. I'm like, there's no way they're beating the team of three champions. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, I, and uh, even still, when you look at the team structure and know how each person wrestles, my first thing when I look at this, of the six people, Tana's taking the pin. I don't. I think my look at Tanari or TJP taking the pin when I look at this. No, for me, it, 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 go look at the experience and how they can walk. Hanari can walk. TJP can walk. Tana had issues running the ropes. I know, but I'm just saying when I look at it, a, a, cha a champions team versus the Empire. I, as much as I love the Empire, I don't look at it as a, I, I don't look in, at the Empire favorably in the match. Yeah, I have to ignore the championships in this one and look at ability. If you can't yeah. walk, <laughs> you shouldn't be winning the match. I mean, you know how I feel about Tanahashi. I love this guy to death, but man, that he is getting opportunities that should be given to people like Cobb or Hanare or TJP is kind of aggravating. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so during the entrance, Oku brings his valet, Amira, out with him. And Tanahashi tries to steal her. Like he gets her on his arm and he, Goku just pulls her away like, no, 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 no. Well, so all I got to say is if you were paying attention to her, she wouldn't need to be on someone else's arm. Yeah, I I just laughed so hard at that. Uh, 
Yeah, um, the crowd is really hyped for Kingston. Like he when he, when they called for him, he, the crowd really roared for him. I I was like, I appreciate that they gave him that. But again, it, again, my appreciation of man has only has only built over the summer. I finally see why a lot of other people are so into this dude after watching the G1 this year. I think you're kind of in that same boat. Uh, you didn't see it. You didn't really see it in him before then either, right? No, I mean, the G1 was some, certainly something that I enjoyed seeing him in. Yeah. With some of the things since, like, not NGPW stuff. Y- yeah. Down. It's very obvious to me that I will probably only like him when he's working NJPW run shows because he's going to be working specifically the NJPW style. For him, that's what I like about him. Is, is that NJPW style? But when he starts doing that deathmatch bullshit, yeah. yeah. So we get into it. Tana and TJP are going back and forth, and Tana does the air guitar, tosses TJP. TJP takes it and he just goes meh and tosses it back. Like doesn't even try to play it. So he get so Tana turns around and gives it to, gives it to Oku. I like that. It's a fun little spot. That's yeah, a nice little. I'm sorry for stealing your woman at the entrance. Yeah, Cobb, Hanari, and TJP attacking Tana. Cobb gets a standing moonsault. TJP gets a hammerlock arm, break, arm bar on uh, Tana and snaps the arm. Hanari in beating up on Tana. Hits a snapmare into the PK, into the senton. Uh, Cobb getting a rib, like, gets like a back rib, like almost like a back rib, but to the ribs. And then, like, plays Tana like a ukulele. Like a ukulele. Uh, over his knee, uh, Tana turns this, uh, the suplex by Cobb into a twist and shout. Hanari and Kingston are in smacking the shit out of each other. Eddie gets the super long Koji, the Koji, Koji chops in the corner, but uh, Hanari comes back with a body shot. Eddie avoids Hanari, who hits TJP, uh, and off the apron. Then, uh, Eddie hits the exploder. Fosbury flop by Oku over the top to the floor onto TJP and Cobb on the floor. Comes back in, hits aces high to TJP in the ring. Gets the single leg crab, but gets triple teamed by United Empire. And TJP gets the Mamba Splash for dos. Uh, TJP gets an octopus hold on Oku, but he slips out. They trade kicks. Cobb attacks Oku, but Tanahashi hits the sling blade. Hanari takes out Tana. Eddie hits Hanare, then TJP kicks Eddie. Oku inadvertently hits Eddie with a kick. TJP tries for the Cobra Twist on Oku, but Oku rolls him around, gets him rolled up, and scores the win at 10 minutes and 39 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't too uh, wasn't too happy with the ending of this, but the, the match itself was tremendous. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt that all these guys performed very, very well. Even Tana, even though he was having some problems running the ropes, it just is what it is with him at this time. Um, I still had a really great time with this match. I'm not going to lie, though. I At some points, I did forget that Eddie Kingston was in this. Mm-hmm. He's been barely in this match. Yeah. Barely here. Oku, from what I did see, was impressive. Um, and and I... I agreed even more so that you know, TJP probably should have been in the other one and Akira should have been in this one. Um, it, TJP did phenomenal in this one. It's always mm. a privilege and a joy to watch TJP wrestle just because he's so good. He's like Yoda Suji in that. He's got that unique technicality but lucha edge to himself that just makes his styling so unique and so cool. Um, mm. I love the comedic angle that Jeff Cobb has really added into his wrestling over the last couple of years since joining the United Empire. Um, I knew he was kind of like always funny beforehand. He just not, he wasn't always showing it. Sometimes he had like the tendency to, tendency to be that like domineering big guy wrestler, which was totally fine. But your breath stinks, doggy. Um, but yeah, he, especially since joining the United Empire, we've kind of seen this like goofiness kind of come out in that, you know, playing the air guitar on on um, Tana's ribs or whatever. And, and, you know, surfing on people's backs and making it a, a joke or, you know, coming up with his own 
taunts that are the people that he's going against. He's become a real, real privilege to, uh, to watch. Um, yeah. I, I really also enjoyed how Tana's still trying to steal what's his face's lady mm-hmm. at the end there. He's getting all yeah. mad. It's just like, man, bro, pay attention to your woman. If you don't want her on another man's arm, keep her on yours. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the semi-main events of the evening. Uh, this was meant 21 minutes, 26 seconds. Someone here, Ishii versus Shingo Takagi. <laughs> Their pictures. Oh my God. They look like a dating site. Like, come on, look at me. Let's look over our shoulders. <laughs> So Takagi more than anything because <laughs> the, the, well, the yeah, he has no neck, so it's harder to like look over your shoulder when you have no neck. Ishii's like, I don't give a shit. Takagi's like, Hey, I'm going Love to romance me. you. He's like, I'm going to romance you. I, all I get, I all I get from his picture is Antonio Banderas. <laughs> I am the dragon. I am the dragon. Shingo I, Takagi. <laughs> oh my god, I want Antonio Banderas to do that now. <laughs> All right. Um uh, for this match and the next one, I'm not gonna go through like I normally do because so much happened in both these matches. I can't I'll spend the next like I'll spend the next, like 40 minutes just recapping if I do both these matches. These matches, I'm just gonna give my opinion and I'll let Mel take her. This match was just two guys beating the living holy out of each other, and it was everything I could ask for from this match and more. Every time these two get in the ring, they only do better. They only up everything they do. These two were absolutely tremendous. Like, just smacking the crap out of each other. The snap power slams. The Just the headbutts. Well, I'm not a big headbutt fan. It was gross in certain points when they were literally head on head headbutting. When Ishii rocks a headbutt to somebody's fucking solar plexus, it looks so fucking good. Like just the chops, these two beating the crap at each other. Hip like Ishi or Takaki going to that pumping bomber so many times in this match, but just not being able to capitalize off it. Just these two just absolutely tore the house down. And I'm thinking watching this match, how are like I know how good of Saber and Osprey. I'm like, how are you follow this? But how good these two just beat the living hell out of each other. So good. End of the match comes. Uh, Takagi reverses the vertical drop brain buster. Or sorry, actually he hit. So he hits his own version of the vertical drop brain buster. But Ishii kicks out at one. He is not having this shit. Ishii hits a sick looking headbutt to Takagi right in the chest. It's that solar plexus headbutt that he does. And then hits him with the sliding lariat for two. Takagi then ends up reversing the vertical drop brain buster. Hits him with the pumping bomber. Sliding knee. Follows it up with last of the dragon. And Ishii wins the match in 21 minutes. 26 seconds. I put this on my match of the year list. It is. You said so- Ishii won. Oh, sorry. Uh, Takagi won. <laughs> I was going to say, that doesn't sound like Ishii. <laughs> I, ap- I apologize. and But, dude, these two killed it. It's going on my match of the year list. So good. Uh, ju- yeah. It's going just behind this main event from tonight. But, dude, mm-hmm. it was so good. And I'm going to talk about my list at the end of the year. Dude, this was incredible. And my list is mainly Japanese matches. I don't have much from the North American scene because I've been paid attention a lot to it this year. Um, I mean, but- that's what we've been watching, right? Yeah, so Tamatonga comes to the ring uh, after the match. He offers Takagi a shot at the never open weight title. And Takagi pretty much just says, Las Vegas. <laughs> he pretty much calls it, he wants it in Vegas. That would be in two weeks on October 28th, which I won't be able to watch live because I'll be at work. Um, it's going to be Shingo Takagi versus Tamatonga for the never open weight title at Fighting Spirit Unleashed in Vegas. Mel, your thoughts on this match? I mean, this was exactly what you said. This was big, meaty men slapping meat. This was a strong style match through and through for these guys. I mean, what two better representatives to bring a showing of strong style, the Japanese strong style, to the UK but these two men? I mean, Shingo Takagi has just been a dominant force since joining NJPW. And I say this every time, but again, he's held that IWGP World Heavyweight Championship 
through arguably the worst time in NJPW history. And then to put him against somebody who's just got such a history with Tomohiro Ishii, I mean, Mr. No Neck, this man is just, he scares me. And like, he's probably the sweetest dude in real life. We're not going to like say he's a care bear or something, but like he probably is. And to see the two of them just going hard. And as you said, those headbutts, I mean, they're just brutal. These guys go into these kind of matches with a complete Mayu Iwatani thought process. It's just complete disregard for their own personal safety. And they just slap the hell out of each other. And this match was just, whew, this was a really, really great, like almost G1 kind of final kind of match for me. Um, but at the end, Tama giving uh, Takagi an opportunity at the Never Open Championship. I say, frick yeah. I mean, that show in Las Vegas is going to be off the charts. We're going to have a Never Open Weight title. We're going to have Julia defending the NJPW Strong title. Eddie Kingston defending his Strong title. Yes. Yeah. Against Hanare. I'm excited for that one. Watch those two yeah, fights. Yeah, finally coming up again. Like we got, we're probably going to have a few more matches happening in the next little bit. Sure. We'll talk. We'll talk about that probably next week. I'll give a quick rundown oh, yeah. of that. I mean, the never open weight championship has been something that they have been struggling with, in my personal opinion, much like those um, never open weight six man tag championships, you know, and now the KOPW championship. You know, trying to get some not notoriety because they're certainly gaining notoriety by who they're on, but like to gain some prestige. Again, for these titles, you know, Strong Style did that for the, the six-man titles. And now, now they're just kind of like, wow, wow. No one really cares. Um, that never open weight title has really been something that they've been working on for the last year with people like Finley, Tama Tonga, you know, Shingo Takagi, and I believe Ishii are both former never open weight champions. Tanahashi kinda, is too. Yeah, yeah, but I'd rather see Takagi facing Tamatanga. No, 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 but you, you gotta remember the early days of that title was Tanahashi and Suzuki. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like talking about people who have held it over the last year. Oh, yeah, but years. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's a perfect opportunity. And regardless of if Tama or Takagi win, it's going to be a great match. And whoever wins is going to hold that title with pride. We know of those two guys. Yeah, so good. So we, oh, so I I put the card in. This is matches the official for Fighting Spirit Unleashed. So just wanted to put it in there, and make a little bit of look at Thomas' graphic. picture. Just so, just like, hey, I'm I'm a generally good dude. I'm the, I'm the good bad guy. Remember? This <laughs> <laughs> is just like, hi, I'm the champ. Oh, it's even a thumbs up almost. Like yeah. he's holding the belt, but it's <laughs> it, 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 where his thumb is sitting is is instead of the oh, thumb sitting so all weird on the title. He's oh god, I didn't even realize. Oh, that. profile pics. We move on. Main event of the evening. Holy shit! <laughs> Holy fucking shit! This match was like I have so many notes, but like, dude, these two, like they've wrestled a bunch of times over the years. These guys, um, Saber, actually the most recent winner from the New Japan Cup last year in 2022 when he beat Osprey in the semifinals. So like, and I think he actually had the winning record in their feud. I think they said on commentary. I could be wrong. I think he like was like six to three against Osprey because again, like it just again, but Saber's been around. He's thirty seven or thirty eight years old. Osprey's 30, 31. Again, these like and they like, o like Osprey said he's come up watching Saber. Like he came up watching Saber in the British scene. Like and these two just going all out here, man. The the entrance though. Osprey coming in, and when the music cut, the c crowd continued to sing the song a little bit. Not as much as like a Jericho, but they did sing a little bit more of it. It was great. For his intro, they were pretty much outdoing the music. 
oh, just chanting Osprey, Osprey, yeah, as it sounds yeah, doing they were it. Over chanting the music and music. They were going, yeah, they were louder than the music. It was. And he came in like a freaking angel, freaking all white with the um, Union Jack marking on it. Okay, yeah, that was it. Was the gear he wore for All In in August there, like when they did the show here in the in the UK. So that's he. he I barely remember what happened last week. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that it's the same gear. This is white gear with the Union Jack stuff on it. Uh, but yeah, absolutely phenomenal. This too, Red Shoes Uno flew over to do, to ref this match as it sh- as it should be. Uh, but dude, the crowd chanting, chanting, "Oh, Zack Saber Junior!" Like, and then as as they're going to do the announcement of the title, Osprey turns and looks at him as he's saying. The United Kingdom Championship, and he went. He's giving like a thumbs up for saying because again, it's still technically the U.S. title, but he's calling it the U.K. title. So he's like making sure the announcer says it what he, the way he wants. I loved it, but like these two men, so good. The dodging, the wrestling, the tech. Like I've never. I don't think I've ever seen Osprey work this technical. Like like when when Saber would take him down and rolling him around and he was transitioning with him, they're so good, man. Like just the back and forth with these two, it it's so hard to put it in the words. It was just one of those matches you watch and you're just like holy crap, holy crap. Like just all the ground game from Saber was absolutely tremendous, and then the the aerials, the the technical aspect, the the striking of Osprey was so good. These two are going back and forth with chops and sh- uppercuts and sh- forearms, and it was so good. He's each man pulling out everything they had in this, like ev- like Saber going for submissions I've never seen him go before. Before, like Osprey hitting hitting a Stormbreaker er- like mid match, and Saber kicking out of it. Was absolutely tremendous. These two, Saber gets him up for the cheeky Nando's at one point toward the end of the match. Three cheeky Nando's in a row, just crushing his face every time. Like just, and it, and the shot was literally shooting Saber's head as he's kicking him in the head. Like a perfect shot to watch him get kicked in the head. Like it was absolutely tremendous. Saber with like some crazy inverted triangles and like. All these different submissions in this match, like both these guys with the PKs and the and it just it was so good, so so good. And at the end of the match, Saber kicks kicks and gets a PK to the chest. Osprey catches a PK, but Saber starts slapping him. Osprey gets a hook kick, but Saber gets a dragon suplex. Osprey comes back with a hidden blade, super os cutter, and he holds on, lifts him up, but Saber slips down from. Slips down, gets an octopus, but Osprey turns it into a dude buster. But Saber kicks out before the ref can count one. Saber's already kicked out. It was insanely impressive. Saber turns a hidden blade into a triangle armbar, but Osprey stands up, lifts him up, and drives him down on his head like almost like a storm driver um, style bomb. Um, hits the hidden blade to the back of the head, picks up Saber. Stormbreaker for the win in a marathon because these two did not barely stop throughout this match. 31 minutes and 19 seconds. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. This was a banger. This was a great match. I didn't expect anything less out of these guys to, to end the show either. Just two insanely popular and extremely talented wrestlers going at it i would have liked to see a little bit more build up to this one they did do some they did more than the rest Mm. um and osprey always has that tendency to force promos or force story or build up where he wants it because that's what he does and i personally like it because then we see his him doing promos, we see him doing stuff, we see him being witty, we see him, you know, calling out Mike Bailey recently while doing kitchen renovations. Like, but that's Osprey. He makes it interesting. He's creating this new, what's the word? 
he's creating this new era mm -hmm. of, of wrestling. And I really hope a lot of more wrestlers start to follow his example, because I think that they could learn a lot from him. He sounds like he has a very smart head on his shoulders and that he's kind of understanding the business on another level that I think would benefit a lot of wrestlers to understand. Um, but into this match, holy frackety frick frack frucken. Um, these guys, you're absolutely right. They just went, went and went and went and went and went. They barely took any breathers. And when they did, like, didn't look like they were breathing. No. They, they forgot. Um, yeah. I mean, Zack Sabre Jr. was, we don't usually see him, like, super gassed or super tired. But getting towards the end of this match, he looked tired. He looked, you know, like, he, he, he sweats quite a bit. But, like, he was sweating a lot in this one. And, like, just so good. I think Will Ospreay took Zack Sabre Jr. to his limit. My problem that I'm having, though, is I feel like this is the third high kind of impact match that Zack Sabre Jr. as the TV champion has lost this year, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that. No. Because as much as I don't like the championship that he's holding, he has given it prestige. And taking losses is, is for me starting to tarnish it a little bit. Like one loss is one thing, but I feel like he's like the loss to, I feel like he took a pretty serious loss to Okada and another one to, uh, Dan, is it Danielson, Bryanson? I don't freaking know. Dan Brian Danielson, yeah. Yeah, that, that one. I feel like there's a third one somewhere that I'm just... Sick brain is forgetting right well, now. This this is the third one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This will be the third one. So it's like, where does the TV championship go from here? Because he, when you put him in a defense situation with that title, he delivers above and beyond. Like he is a dominant champion. But when he's not defending that title, we're not getting the same person. And it's yeah. strange to me. Um, I'd like to see him defend the title a few more times, I think, in the next coming months. And I'd like to see him go back to that dominant kind of author that authoritarian kind of dominance in that kind of vision. Just because I, I feel like the, the kind of win-loss, win-loss, win-loss thing and now loss, loss, loss is not helping him very much otherwise this match was freaking tremendous yeah. tremendous so we're gonna see Another we'll see saber defend that title on uh october 24th on the second night of the super junior tag league road to power to struggle he will be defending against oleg or uh, bolton oleg what oh i wonder who's gonna win that oh definitely bolton uh, so I'm going to quickly go over the post-match. Uh, they bow to each other after the match. When Osprey offers a handshake, Sabre pulls him in and kisses him on the cheek in, in like, respect. And I love that. That was just – like, it's two guys that have known each other forever. He's like, nah, fuck this shit. He gave him a kiss on the cheek. Just cheek, just a cheeky little thing. Uh, Osprey gets a sign from the crowd, holding it up, saying tonight's attendance and is 81,000 and whatever. The, the all-in announced attendance, which is actually – the announced tickets purchased is, or this is the actual tickets purchase number, not the amount of people that were actually in the stadium. Um, and Osprey's laughing at it because he got he got that number tattooed on himself, and then it was found out that it wasn't actually that many people there, just that many people bought tickets. So he was laughing about it. Um, he thanks Saber for this match, and this is where the crowd just goes, "Oh, Zach Saber Jr." Um, and then he says Zach was a standard bearer for British wrestling. Makes jokes about. Saber being vegan, and then the, the, all the stuff, and then he says some the Tories, but he's like, ah, fuck the Tories, and then the crowd starts chanting, fuck the Tories, it's just laughing so yeah, hard. Yeah, Saber Jr., the original soy boy. Yeah, um, he says uh, Saber carried it for so long, but he learned so much, and then he makes comments about how the everything's more expensive. He makes a comment about more his mortgage going up. He's uncertain in his future, but it might be the last time he wrestles in a ring with Zach. Thank you for pushing me, because again, we don't know where he's going in the new year, right? Um, but he's got a bone to pick with New Japan. He's been working so tirelessly, but there's a guy calling himself the world champion in the back. 
He's been the one defending a title around the world. Uh, no one's better than him. He asks if anyone wants to wrestle. Any sexy Japanese bitches? I'm just like, okay. And then Umino walks out. And he goes, did you say Japanese sexy bitch? And this is where the crowd there chanting sexy bitch. Sexy bitch. And I was laughing. And he, go, and he goes, it's of me. Wait, of all the things. <laughs> so Umino goes, it's me. I laughed so hard. Osprey says, you are Japanese sexy bitch. And, and the crowd starts chanting sexy bitch again. He goes, do you really want to step up? You lost to me three times. Do you really want to lose to me four times? Umino. Well, yes, he got this from, from John Moxley. Quote South Park. And say it's. Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker. And and just to make it even funnier, it the mic wasn't working the first time he said it. So Osprey had to be like, eh. oh, there we are. Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker. <laughs> so, it was so good. Uh, um, and then he asked who told him, and he said Moxley told him that. Uh, so he says, you want a shot at, at Slick Billy with the big willy? If you if you want me, I know I know I like that line. If you want me, Okan wants Moxley in Osaka. Do we have a deal? Umino says I like it. I'll ask John Moxley, but I challenge you for the UK title championship and the US title. Bring both on November fourth in Osaka. That means he's going to have both his UK and his US titles with him, even though they're technically the same title. So, Umino leaves. Osprey calls out Gideon. Uh, they're going to do the sign-off. Then they're waiting for Akira and TJP. They never show up. He makes a joke about Akira's probably taking a shit. Um, <laughs> or sorry, Akira's on the toilet joke. Uh, Gideon does the sign-off, but he's just screaming. You see Cobb go. And he, like, backs away a little bit. It was funny. So after they do finish sign off, then Akira shows up, but still no TJP. Because they're all like posing together, like like grouped up. But yeah. TJP never showed up. It was weird. I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure there's only so many showers in the stadium. And you know, we gotta let all these boys shower down because nobody <laughs> wants to die from that smell. Um Especially in the UK, you know, where what is that that curdled cream or whatever is a is a thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, Akira Akira was a mess this night, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. A little bit of a, a little disheveled. I like, but, like it, I don't though. know if you follow him on um, his like social medias and stuff. Like, not even twelve hours later, he was in Italy. So he was probably a little stressed, a little stressed to um, be traveling around a little bit, a little frazzle dazzled. Maybe that's why he's neglected the haircut. Um, shaving a haircut, two bits. No, leave it. Leave it. Let it grow, boy. Let it go. If he's gonna let it grow, he needs to at least take care of it, and he's not doing that. Well, okay, he if, at if, least if he terms look the... like a bird is not gonna fly out of it when someone's trying to kiss you and peck their nose off. Okay, trim the beard. I'm cool with that, but leave the hair. Let the hair grow out a bit. I like the longer. Even if hair. he is letting it grow out, brush it. That is true. Like, that don't look true. like you just rolled out of bed when you're with a team called the United Empire, where your promo picks are you guys in suits. Mm. Look like a suit. Look like yes. a suit. It's not hard. <laughs> Well, yeah, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we are it's time for us to get out of here. You can find me on the X, uh, Mastin on Blue Sky and Hive at That Canada Guy, TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at That Canada Dude, Facebook. You can find me over here at Andre Melball Wrestling Talk. You can find me uh, every weekend as it's going right now over on Our Local Establishment at twitch.tv slash Our Local Establishment with my boy, my alternate tag team partner, Mr. Ol' Ed. He, me and him are uh, will be talking Marvel talk over there on o Our Local Establishment. Uh, Loki Season 2, we're going to be doing Episode 3 this coming weekend. Tentatively scheduled for Saturday morning, but it depends on family stuff for him if he has to pick up his kid and all that other stuff so we'll we'll see we'll see where that happens uh we should be there if you want to check out the replays of all their stuff 
Twitch or YouTube.com slash at our local establishment. You can also go over to Backbreaker Video, our boy Mike the Ref at YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker Video to watch all of our great content, all of his great wrestling content over there. You can find all his live gaming content at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. You can find replays of all his great gaming content at YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore gaming. We can find him, Mr. PJC, Mr. Rick Jules, and Miss Kayla J. Kayla J. Love Kayla J. Mm, Melball, where can mm. they find you, Madame? In bed at this point. Um, Ooh, kinky. No, not no. Unless you think coughing in your face is, is sexy. Well, you said they can find you in bed. Come on. Hacking a lung up. Um, you can find a Melball on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can find her on everything else. Mastodon, Blue Sky, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook at Melball Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming. Paramindful mindful every couple of weeks with Alex the Werewolf. We just dropped an episode on Monday about the Bermuda Triangle. What's happening there and what we think is going on. So go check that out. You can also find me on Astrid Pizarro's YouTube channel with our show Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We do that every couple of weeks. Though Astrid has been super busy lately, but we got a lot of stuff we need to talk about. So we're probably going to get that recorded in the next couple of days here for you guys. If you're wanting to watch NJPW, we will leave a link in the channel description. It is njpwworld.com. It is 999 yen or approximately 715 Canadian right now, um, according to their website. It's still an incredible price to watch some amazing wrestling. You can get on there and watch some of the stuff that we were talking about. Well, not today because this was on Ref Pro. But if you want to watch some of the Road to Destruction tour that we just did talk about or some of the past NJPW um, stuff like, like Jay White, the emergence of Jay White and the Switchblade, you can see where Gato turned on Okada to join the Switchblade. You can see Kenny Omega. Heck, you can even see Cody Rhodes doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so go check that out, you guys. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say thank you all so very much. And we appreciate all the comments, the likes of the video, the subscribes to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> but we are going to go away. We, we are going to go away. away. <laughs> And that being said, I am your mom. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Adios.